assessments. And remember your um, assessment is going to start off with like a medium question and then how you answer it depends on whether the question is going to get harder or going to get easier. So if you get it right, the questions are going to get harder. If you get it wrong, the questions are going to get easier. So when you sit here and say, oh my gosh, these are getting harder and harder, that's a good thing. That means you keep getting them right. That means your pie's getting juicier. So even though you may not have done what I'm getting ready to do, um, you can make your pie juicier by getting these right on your assessment. Now, 50% um, is where I want you today, 50% or higher um, for Schedule Assessment 2 because we're about at the halfway point. And um, if you are above 50% or if you're below 50%, remember I want you to look at what your pie is before you start your test. And I want your pie to be about at what that grade is when you finish. And if you forget to look, I can look when we finish. So that's our goal for today. Now, we're going to pick up kind of where we left off. We're going to do one more like what we did when we left off. Um, this is still area. And when we do area, we have to know the formula, which means we have to know the shapes. So this is exactly what we did last time. So when I look at this problem, I have to know the shapes that I'm seeing. So I have an outside shape and I have an inside shape. What is my outside shape? What shape do you see on the outside? This is my outside shape. What is my outside shape? A rectangle. What is my inside shape? My inside shape is going to be a triangle. Now, I am going to be subtracting those two shapes. And the reason I'm subtracting is because if I was adding, it would look like this. Adding means you're gluing them. Subtracting means you're cutting them out or you're taking them away. And in this problem, we are starting with a rectangle and we are cutting a corner off. So we're starting with a rectangle and we are cutting or taking away the corner. That's why it's a subtraction problem. We good? So if I go to my formula sheet, I need to find the formulas for a rectangle and a triangle. So I already have my formula sheet pulled up. And I forgot to get my snipping tool. So, on my formula sheet, I need a rectangle and I need a triangle. So, there's my rectangle. And here is my triangle. And you don't have to memorize them, you just need to know how to find them. So, there's my triangle and there's my rectangle. A little bit smaller. So, I'm going to start with the rectangle. So for the entire rectangle, what is the length and what is the width? What's the length and the width of the rectangle? Nine and eight. Nine and eight. Don't tell me six because six is not the whole rectangle. Six is just a partial side. So the whole length and the whole width are going to be the whole sides, not the baby sides. So eight and nine are going to be my length and my width. So 8 times 9 is the whole length and the whole width. That's 72. Now, for the triangle, here's my little baby triangle. Now, you have to realize that we need to know the base and the height. So what I'm going to do is take that triangle and I'm going to turn it to make you realize that the base is what it sits on and the height is straight up and down. Because the way it is right now, there's no base. It's not sitting on anything. So if I take it and turn it clockwise or pettywampus or whatever you want to say, this is my base and this is my height. Okay? So my base is going to be this side. My height 
is going to be this side. Now, I was not given either side in the problem. I was not given the purple side. I was not given the blue side. But last class period, we learned that 6 and this side has to equal what? 9. So 6 plus purple has to equal 9. So what is the purple going to be? 3. three. <clears throat> and the purple is 3 because they have to add up to 9, the side that's across from it. So my purple and my formula is 1 half times my base, and my base is going to be 3. Now, my height is the blue side, and we do not know the blue side. But the blue side and 5 have to add up to 8. And we can't say, oh, those look like they're the same size. We have to mathematically know why. So 5 plus 3 is going to give me the 8 on the bottom. So this side is 3 because they add up to the 8 on the bottom. So that is going to be 3. So I go to my calculator. It is a fraction. So I'm going to wrap up the 1 half because that's what the formula says. Base times height is 4.5. So I'm going to take the rectangle, which was 72, minus the triangle, which is 4.5, and that's going to give me my answer. So 72 was the rectangle. 4.5 was the triangle. So when I subtract them, that gives me an area of 67.5 square meters. You need the minus because it's, it's, that's what the part is missing. Right, because the minus means take away. And I started out with a rectangle, and I'm taking away the corner. If it was an addition problem, an addition problem would be a rectangle plus a triangle. Yeah, it would be on top of it, but if it's like sucking in, it's subtraction. But if it's on top of it like Legos, then it would be an addition. Good question. We good? All right, let's look at another one. Okay. Same concept, different shapes. What shapes do you see? A rectangle and a circle. Do you see a whole circle? No, we see half a circle. Am I adding the two shapes or am I subtracting the two shapes? I am subtracting. I started out with a rectangle. And I am, I am cutting it out, or I am taking away half a circle. Okay? So, same process. I start with the outside shape, which is a rectangle. And we know the formula for the rectangle is length times width. And then I go to the inside shape. My inside shape is half a circle. So if I go to my formula sheet, my formula sheet only has a full circle. So over here, I only have the area of a full circle. Did I bring it over? Yes. So this is a full circle. So what I do when I get that answer is I cut the answer in half because I only want half of it. So let's start with the rectangle. What is the length and width of the rectangle? 18 times 24. 18 times 24. We good? Length times width. Now for my circle, here's my circle. If I, if I draw the whole circle, can you see that this, what is this number going to be? 18. 18. Now, the formula for a circle says pi times r squared. Do we know what pi is? Yes. What is pi? 3.14. Pi is 3.14. 
Now, do we know what the R stands for? Radius. Radius. What is a radius? And you need to know that when you're doing a circle, all the way through the center of the circle, that is called the diameter. Halfway through the circle is called a radius. Now, here's the way Ms. Cooper realizes it, remembers it. Diameter, radius. So diameter is a long word. Radius is a short word. So diameter goes all the way through the circle, through the middle. Diameter. Radius goes halfway through the circle. So if the diameter is 20, what's the radius going to be? 10. If the radius is 50, what's the diameter going to be? 100. So in this problem, can you see that 18, and the reason I know it's 18 is because this is a rectangle, and the left and the right are the same. So there's my circle. 18 is the diameter, because it's going all the way through. But the formula says I need the radius. So my radius is going to be 9, because your radius is half of it. So it's going to be times 9 squared. 3.14 times 9 squared. Now, that's going to give me a full circle. But I don't want the whole circle. I just want half of it. So I divide it by 2. So let me go to my calculator for a minute. I'm going to do 18 times 24. That gives me my rectangle. Then I'm going to do 3.14 times 9 to the second. That's going to give me a whole circle. Then I'm going to divide it by 2. So, right now, I have a full circle, I mean a full rectangle, which is 432. I have half a circle, which is 127.17. Am I adding or subtracting those two things? I am subtracting because remember I cut it off. So it's going to be 432 minus 127.17. There's your final answer. Your area is 304.83. And anytime you're doing area, your units are going to be squared. I'm going to do a couple of these. All right, let's look at another one. Okay, look at this one. What am I doing to this one? What two shapes do you see? Okay, we have a rectangle and we have a half circle. But this time we are doing a rectangle plus half a circle. We're gluing them together, I'm not subtracting them. Subtracting them was when I started out with a rectangle and I cut away half a circle. This one, I'm doing a rectangle plus half a circle. See the difference? Mm -hmm. So this one is going to be a rectangle plus a circle cut in half. Mm -hmm. It's like poking out your belly or sucking in your belly. This one, you're poking your belly out. You're adding weight. The last one we did, we were sucking in our belly. So for this one, the formula for a rectangle is length times width. The formula for a circle is pi r squared, and we're going to cut it in half because pi r squared is a full circle. So what is the length and the width of the rectangle? 20 by 34. Then we'll get that answer. The formula for a circle is pi r squared. And just to show you, here is the full circle. So what number goes here? 20. But we need the radius. 
So what is the range it's going to be? Mm -hmm. 10. So we'll do 3.14 times 10 squared. And then we'll cut that in half because we only need half the circle. Because when I am doing it, I am only adding half a circle to my answer. Now, I took half of the diameter to get the radius. But that answer is this thing right here. That is a full circle. Case. And then I'm dividing it by two because I only need half of it. So when I go to my calculator, I'm first going to do the 20 by 34. Then I'm going to do the 3.14 times 10 to the second, which is a full circle. Then I'm going to cut it in half. So I have 680 for that one. And then I have 157 for this one. And then I have to ask myself, am I adding or am I subtracting? I am adding. So that is... There's my answer, and area is always squared units. They're not as bad once you understand what you're doing. Okay, look at this one. What am I doing to that one? Am I adding or am I subtracting? I am subtracting. This time I'm sucking in my belly and I'm sucking in my butt. <laughs> okay, so. What is my outside shape? A rectangle. And I'm subtracting because I'm sucking in. What am I sucking in? What shape? A full circle this time. And the reason it's a full circle is because think of like an Easter. If you take this piece and then you take this piece and you put them together, do you see that that's a full circle? And what is the diameter of that circle? Let me move, hold on. What is the diameter of that circle? 14 is the diameter. So what would the radius be? The radius is going to be 7. So when I do length times width and when I do pi r squared, what is my length and width? 31 times who? Length and width of the rectangle. 14. Because you've got to do the whole length and the whole width of the rectangle. But when I do the circle, it's going to be 3.14 times 7 squared. Do I have to half that? No, because I'm doing the whole circle. So I'll get this answer, I'll get this answer, and I'll subtract because it's sucking in. Are we feeling better? Look at this one. What do you see with that one? We are adding because I'm poking out my belly and I'm poking out my booty. What am I adding? Great thing to walk in on, Lakinia. A rectangle and a full circle. Feeling better? Yo, I love. Did I tell y'all I love 3.14? Did I tell y'all why I love 3.14? No. No? Mm -hmm. I did? No. Um, I love me some pie, y'all. I had my daughter, I didn't, I didn't tell you about my daughter. No. I had my daughter induced so she would have a good mathematical birthday. That is how much I love math. Yeah. <laughs> For real. For real. For real. Um, I have one child. I have one child. And when it got, I wanted her to be healthy, number one. But number two, I wanted her to have a good mathematical birthday. So what's her birthday? Um, and so when it got close to being her birthday, um, my doctor knew I was crazy. And so, at least you admit it. Yeah, I admit it. 
And so I said, you know, I want Madison to have a good birthday. And so we got close to the induction time. And, and so I said, I want her birthday to be 31206. <coughs> she has a GCF of three because it was just, I have one child, so it was me, my husband, and my child. There's three people in my family. So all of her digits are divisible by three. And if you add up her month and her day, it equals her year. And everybody who stays in the hospital, I mean, who has a baby, you know you have the baby, you stay in the hospital a day, and then you go home. Mm -hmm. So I came home from the hospital. On National Pie Day. Y'all don't celebrate? No. I celebrate every year National Pie Day. 3.14, March 14th. <laughs> you see, I really think that our spring break week, y'all, we have spring break from March 11th to March 15th. I really think that they are giving us that week off to celebrate Pi Day. Yeah. Like, for real. It changes every year, though. It's the same week every year. I just love it. I will send y'all all a text telling y'all to go celebrate Pi Day, 3.14, 1596. Well, I'll need some hot. So do you think everything in the world works in numbers? I do. I want, so when my husband asked me, not my baby daddy, but when my husband, my current husband, asked me to marry him, he asked me on a good mathematical day. And the first thing I do is I go to my phone and I'm like, we got to get married on a good mathematical day. And so, <laughs> did he plan to ask you on a good mathematical day? Because he was scared I wouldn't say yes unless it was a good mathematical well, that's the day. He knows that I'm crazy. So I said, you know what you're getting into. I got papers on you now. So did you have to tell him what days were No, he knows me. Okay. He knows me. Like he knows when we, we dated for like a year and we never lived together until we were married. So he knew like I don't get out of bed. Like I set my alarms for good mathematical times. Like, I don't get out of bed or I don't set an alarm unless it's a good mathematical time. Okay. So, like, this morning it was um, 6.56 or 7.07. Like, it has to be, like, I don't do 7 o'clock. And, like, when I pump my gas, it's got to be, like, $36.36. .36, or it could be $36.63. So it can be a whole <laughs> No. I mean, it could be like twenty dollars and two cents. Pump it till it stops pumping. Now mine's got to be pretty. If I could, I would. If I could, I would. so my husband and I sat down and I said, okay, I want to get married on twelve, thirteen, fourteen, because that's the last consecutive day, month, and year of our lifetime. And it was a Saturday. And I'm like, this is perfect. And he's like, no, I'm not waiting that long. So that was out. So then I said, okay, I'll move it up a year. What if we get married on 9, 11, 13? That was consecutive odd numbers. You know, 9, 11, 13. He's ex-military, so he was not getting married on September 11th. Nope. So we ended up going back and forth and back and forth, and we got married on 628. And all of my friends are like, Jen, you let me down. You're known for being the mathematical person. And so I was like, 628 is 3.14 times 2. <laughs> so my daughter completed me on 1 pi, and my husband and his son completed me on 2 pi. So we actually got married at 6.28 p.m. on 6.28. So that was 2 pi at 2 pi, which was 4 pi, because it's me, my daughter, my husband, and his son. So there were four of us. That's cute. That's so cute. When you think about it, it's cute. I love math, y'all. I love. When you think about it, it's cute. I'm doing it. I'm not putting that much thought into it. Oh, I love this math. You love me? I love you. I love math. I just love I mean, everything. Does anybody live in Hartsville? Do I have any Hartsville people? Okay. All right. Killaville. In Killaville. The old, if you've ever been.
in there. The old Walmart is down here, and like there's a Hardee's right here. And then here's the new Walmart. Well, I can't spell, but Walmart. Okay, and then there's like a little road right here, and then you turn, and there's like a gas station right here. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. When I was married to my baby daddy, my baby daddy used to always come down here and then cut up here. And I used to yell at him and say, honey, you need to turn because this is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So this is the shortest distance. So even when I drive down the road, I am always thinking about math. So this is the hypotenuse. This is the right, I mean, this is across from the right angle at Hardy's. That's the shortest distance. Everywhere I go, I think about math. I mean, I literally, I will wake up at like 2 o'clock in the morning and think about this class. Like, what can I do better to teach blah, blah, blah? What example could I use to teach blah, blah, blah? You may have a slide of session. You're very passionate. I am. I love what I do. Just like the other day, um, my daughter, I'm a vegetarian. And my daughter is eats a little bit more than I do, but not much. And um, the only pizza, I don't eat pizza, but the only pizza she eats is Totino's pizza. And my husband says that's like the worst pizza ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, recently, the single Totino's have gone from circles to squares. That's devastating for me because it wouldn't fit on my plate in that So, recently they're like a dollar. They were on sale for a dollar at Walmart. And my, my daughter's getting ready to turn 13 next month. And so we were in the Walmart frozen section, and me, my husband, and my child have to have a little math lesson. I pull out my graphic calculator on my cell phone, and I'm like, okay, y'all, this is a six-inch pizza, and this is a six-inch pizza. So then my husband, who's older than I am, has to start talking about the square pizzas at the schoolhouse which is what he calls school. He said, there's nothing beat the schoolhouse pizzas. Remember those square pizzas at school? No, I don't because I'm a vegetarian. I never ate the schoolhouse pizzas. So he had to talk for 45 minutes about how great those schoolhouse pizzas were. And so then we had to discuss which one should we buy. So we found the area of each one of these. This is length times width. This is pi r squared. So for the square one, what is the length and the width? Six times six is 36 square inches. For the other one, pi is 3.14. What is the radius of the other? Three. Because if the diameter is six, do we agree the radius is three? So we come over and we do 3.14 times 3 to the second. That one is 28.26 inches squared. Y'all, if they're the same price, which one am I going to buy? This one's 28 square inches. This one's 36 square inches. You're getting more pizza off the square one. It's like a little bite. You can't even cut it right anymore. Watch, watch. This is the square pizza. This is what you're, okay, so the square pizza's right here. And then if I take the circle pizza and I put it on top of it, you're losing all of these corners. So the reason that the schoolhouse sold square pizza or gave you square pizza is because they're trying to make the most that they can to feed the units. Domino's, DiGiorno, whatever, they serve the circle pizzas because they want to take that extra dough and put on the next pizza and save their money. Amen. So Totino's is actually giving you more pizza by making it square. So I cut my daughters like this. <laughs> so she eats little baby square pizza, like little French bread style pizzas. 
pizza sticks. This is your wrap. Cheese. <laughs> but you're getting more pizza for the price. Math is everywhere, boo. But it won't cost to my OCD. I'm OCD too. Take medication. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, let me show you, because Alex will mark it wrong, if you um, put the wrong units on a problem dealing with area perimeter or circumference. <laughs>